Good morning. This is Crystal Woods with Seasons in the Vine, and it's Fresh Friday. Whew, has it been a week? Things are moving and grooving in my neck of the woods. I'm a working woman now, you know, like with a legitimate business. Seasons in the Vine is doing really, really well to the point almost where I have to catch myself from feeling slightly overwhelmed in a really good way. I love that the Lord is growing things. Um, I'm also very, very acutely aware that I have nothing to offer people in myself. My message is consistent in that what God has done for me, he can do for you. And that he is the healer and he is the deliverer. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is what changes hearts. It's what changes lives. It's, it's what changes people. It's what changes a region. It's what changes the world. And it certainly changed me. And so that's my foundation. That's my root system. Because in myself, there's no way I could do the things that are happening. It's really him. And I just position people to engage with the presence of God, to engage with the Lord God Almighty in real time. And so things are building. Clientele is building, which is great. Events are off the chart popular, which is fantastic. And I feel overwhelmed at times. And I began to get that anxious feeling. And that's what I want to talk to you to, about today. I want to talk to you about how fear can be used to advance the kingdom. And this is how I want to explain it. Fear can be used to advance the kingdom and how to do it. And so I woke up knowing I have this huge event tonight because you guys are seeing this Friday. Uh, the turnout, I, I, I'll tell you afterwards. I don't even feel like I can say it right now, but the turnout was so much greater than I had thought or anticipated. And we just kept increasing the amount of people um, that were going to be there because people want to meet Jesus. <laughs> People want to worship the Lord. People want to feel his healing touch. They want to have wounds mended. And so how can I say no to that? How can I say there's a cap? So yeah, just, just keep coming out and we're going to set an environment and, and we're going to let the Lord come. But in that, there was this human response in me where I was anxious. I woke up feeling just like almost a little uh, panicky about the, the weight of the expectations maybe that I was putting on myself. I don't feel like other people are putting that on me, but it was just all the moving elements, you know, of the evening and then working still this week. And I was just feeling some things. And I know we have to agree on this, that God does not make us afraid. He does not give us a spirit of fear. And so I knew that my upset was not from him but could definitely be used by him. Did you know that? Even when things are happening, whether they're from the just life being crazy or uh, periods of fear or the enemy directly, God can use all of those things to bring about his business and what he wants to do in you. Those are called growth opportunities. And so before me, I had set this fear within me and I went right to the Lord with it. Like I'm feeling, I'm feeling anxious. <laughs> And I don't want to. So what is going on? And that is the first thing that you can do to take your fear and use it to advance the kingdom of God. Because fear can be a tool of indication that there's an area in our lives that we are not in alignment with God. That we're not trusting God the way that we're supposed to and designed to and the way that we're called to. And so that fear that I had was because I was thinking about my human limitation to actually get all of this done and to, to deliver whatever I thought I needed to deliver at this event. And I needed to go to the Lord with that. And he showed me, he said, well, Crystal, you're fearful because you know you can't do it. And you need to acknowledge that this is not something that you can do and that's okay. What you're responsible for is inviting me in. That's what the Lord was saying to me. You're responsible for setting the stage for me to show up. You're responsible for being honest and transparent about brokenness and about healing. That's what you're responsible for. And that's it. The rest is up to me. And so do you see how that fear within me immediately when given to the Lord, he showed me where it was coming from. 
I was putting far too much responsibility on myself for something supernatural happening and not remembering it's always the Lord that does it and he will be the one that does it again. And so fear can highlight, this is the second thing I want you to know, fear can highlight the next area of growth, the next area that the Lord wants to kill your flesh. It can be the very next area of your sanctification. So what are you fearful about? And what does it look like in your life? Like for me, it just looks like getting back into working again. Um, But being my own boss and and putting my own self on the line and my own name on the line and my own ministry on the line and, and shifting even the ministry into a healing and deliverance ministry where we are preaching the gospel, like I'm doing right now to you and what I do at my events. But then we're, we're saying like Jesus wants to heal and we're praying for healing and we're delivering people from demonic possession, oppression, um, in the name of Jesus, he's the one that does it. But like, we're moving into that because this world is bound and there's freedom in Jesus. And so just seeing how God, cause it's not like I set out necessarily to gear it this way, but people are looking for help and God is bringing them to these events and to, um, to seasons in the vine because they are hearing that God is moving there. And that made me feel fearful, right? Because I'm like, you know, like this is, this is nothing I can do. Like I, I'm not a healer. I'm not a deliverer. I know who is and getting people into the position of encountering the Lord for that. And so I just had that tension of like overlapping responsibilities. I'm just being really transparent. Like this is, this is big stuff. The response has been really powerful and the Lord is showing up very powerfully. And I mean, time and time and time and time again, people are coming out with testimonies and it's blowing my mind. And with each one, I felt myself putting an expectation on me though. They're like, I have to keep this up somehow. And that's, that was where the fear was coming from because I was beginning to put that responsibility on me and the responsibility always is on the Lord, right? Because it's his burden to bear what he wants to do with his people. It's my job to just provide the atmosphere. It's my job for just believing that he is who he said he is and that he desires to heal people's emotional wounds, physical needs, mental wounds, and spiritual wounds. That's what he wants to do. And so the next time you have fear, this is number three, get curious and analyze where it's coming from. Know that it's not coming from the Lord, so it has to be coming from something else. And in my case, it was my flesh. It was my flesh feeling overwhelmed and taking on more than I'm supposed to take on because that's not my job. My job is to be a daughter. That's it. Like, that's what I get to do and do whatever I see and hear my father doing, just like Jesus. That's the invitation that I have. And I have to really keep it that simple. And I found myself beginning to pile on expectations. It was a really quick turnaround, just a couple hours because the fear was there. I knew it wasn't supposed to be, but I knew the Lord was speaking to me through it. And now I'm submitting myself again, even in real time, I'll be doing it tonight at the event, to letting him do what he does and me just getting out of the way and letting him have his way and just praying for people as the Lord leads me to do. And as his heart desires them to experience him, move them into those situations and those places with worship and praise and just all the things that I love to do anyway. And so when I keep the focus on him and not myself and my own limitations, then the fear goes away. So there's sanctification in this for me. (laughs) There is so much growth. There is a letting go. There is a continual surrender to not carry what is it mine to carry. And so I am going to use fear to bring me to a place of acknowledging that I need the Lord. And I want him to take that off of me and out of me, that spirit of fear, because it's not from him and it's from what I'm doing. It's in my flesh. And we have authority and power over our flesh, right? Flesh. The Bible says, you know, your flesh has been crucified and don't yield to the flesh, yield to the spirit. And so that's what I have to consistently do. And in that I can grow. We all can grow in holiness and confidence and boldness so that the kingdom will advance. So don't let your fear paralyze you. Let it position you 
into advancing the kingdom as you surrender it to God. And I'm just going to end with this Bible story because I always like to tie it into the word of God. And this is what I'm going to leave you with. Exodus 14. We have the um, Exodus, obviously, is the nation of Israel coming out of Egypt and Pharaoh is hot on their tail and he is coming after them and they start griping and they're very fearful. And verse 10 says, when Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them and they feared greatly. So they have fear, right? But it's not from God. It's from the Egyptians. It's from Pharaoh. It's from knowing without God, this isn't going to go well. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you've taken us away to die in the wilderness? Like they're, they're freaking out and rightfully so. They have fear. What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is, is not this what we have said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone so that we may serve the Egyptians. Like we didn't even want to come. We, we said we wanted freedom. But then when it was came time to like go into freedom, we changed our mind. We want to stay slaves. Wow. So there's a lot there. That's for another day, I'm sure. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, now this is the word for you with your fear. Fear not. Stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. See the salvation of the Lord that he will work for you today. Your fear, when you decide not to cave to it and to stand firm, you will be ushering in the salvation of the Lord, even in that response. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. And listen to this. The Lord will fight for you. You have only to be silent. And so tell that to your fear. Get curious about why it's there. What area are you not trusting the Lord? What area does he want to grow in you? It could be big things or little things. Like what I shared with you, I mean, it just means my business is growing. My ministry is growing. Praise God. Like it's a good thing. But I began to put too much on myself. And that's not what God has for me. And it made me fearful. And so it was just another opportunity. And will the kingdom be advanced as I take that fear and give it to the Lord and let him grow in me and let him change me and sanctify me even further and clarify even further that I don't have to do it. He does it. I just get to be obedient in it. Yes, that advances the kingdom, friends. So think about that with your fear. Much love and blessing. I pray you're all doing well. And I will see you next week.